Well good afternoon folks and welcome back to another video review, another scenery review. Uh, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you today. Um, we are in Belfast in Northern Ireland, part of the UK, and uh, we're looking at Belfast George Best City Airport. Not to be confused with Belfast Aldergrove, which is the main airport. This is Belfast City, um, now known as George Best Airport, Echo Golf Alpha Charlie. This is a payware scenery by Gary Summons over at UK 2000 Scenery. Um, well known developer, been in the business a long time and I'm also a huge supporter of his work. His work is excellent. Um, this is version 1, it's for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. Download file um, is 28 meg and it installs at 121 meg. So it's not huge, but actually quite a lot of work has gone into this. Uh, the price um, is £14.99, pence, which equates to roughly €17.21, or US $17.04 US. Um, US and Euro prices are estimates and include VAT and tax, which of course may de vary depending on your country of purchase. Uh, it's available from UK2000 Scenery's website and from Sim Market. It's actually slightly cheaper at UK2000 Scenery. It's a really lovely, I'll uh, say right off the bat, it's a really nice scenery, very well put together. And as you can see from this high level image, it fits in completely with the surrounding terrain. Um, you can see areas where the, um, they, the, 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 they, he's left the development here where you've got the roads joining, but that's okay. Here you've got the, the city port of Belfast. Um, it's right next to the port and uh, the whole area looks really nice. Getting down low, I've had a good sort of 45-50 minute spell around this airport. There's a lot of work's gone into it um, and it looks really good. I'll give you the list of features. So, it's full detail buildings, realistic ground markings, high resolution ground image, stunning night effects, high detailed airport vehicles, excellent frame rates, got a full set of signs, fencing, vegetation, PBR materials, internal tower details, and internal pier details, and animated jetway. Now two things I'll stay right off the bat. I have not been able to get the jetway to work properly. I'll show you in the sequence that I'll show you in a minute. Um, but that may be um, an issue that can be fixed. The other big problem here is entering the buildings. Um, it would appear that this scenery, as with many others, suffers from the uh, Asobo building bug, where basically you attempt to enter the, a building to view inside with a drone camera and you get bumped up to the roof. Um, I have um, mentioned this to Gary on the forum and there is a thread in the Flight Sim forum. Basically Asobo did make changes to the way collision works with buildings. Um, and it would appear that it's behoven to the developers to adapt the sceneries for this change so that it doesn't happen. Um, I'm going to try and, and look into it a little bit further because it seems to be hit and miss in some cases. So I'll so my way well reload the scenery later on and see whether I can get into the building or not. But for the moment, my first attempt, it does seem that this building bug where the drone camera can't actually get into a building to look inside and therefore I can't show you the internal work that's been done in the terminal. But everything else looks fantastic. So anyway, there you go. Um, let's, as usual, start with a bit of history. This airport's been around a long time and has got quite a bit of history behind it. So let's just look at some of that. So, Belfast George Best City Airport, Echo Golf Alpha Charlie, not to be confused with the larger and more well-known Belfast Aldergrove Airport, Echo Golf Alpha Alpha, which lies some 15 miles or 25 kilometres away to the west, is a public-use airport owned by the 3i Group and operated by Belfast City Airport Limited and is located in central Belfast, Northern Ireland, United Kingdom. Situated in County Down, right in the heart of the city and close to the main docks, the Exhibition Centre and the Titanic Museum, the airport is adjacent to the port of Belfast and is some 3 miles or 4.8 kilometres from Belfast city centre. 
The airport shares the site with Spirit Aerosystems Aircraft Manufacturing Facility, formerly known as Short Brothers or Bombardier. The airport began commercial operations in 1983 and was known as Belfast City Airport until it was renamed in 2006 in memory of the late George Best, an Irish professional football soccer player who played for many years for the English club Manchester United but who was originally from Belfast. The airport has a CAA public use aerodrome license that allows flights for public jet transport operations or for flying instruction. The airport began life way back in 1937 as Sydenham Airport and was established by the Shorts Brothers Public Limited Company, or simply Shorts, close to the company's Belfast factory. This became Belfast's main civilian airport from 1938 to 39. Later, the airfield was requisitioned by the Royal Air Force as RAF Belfast in 1941, then transferred to the Royal Navy, becoming Royal HMS Gadwall, also known as Royal Naval Air Station Belfast or Royal Naval Air Station Sydenham, in 1943. RAF Nuts Corner then became Belfast's main airport, while Aldergrove would later become the primary airport in Northern Ireland. The airport continued to be used for military purposes until the 1970s, reverting to RAF Belfast in 1973 and closing in 1978, including a period of use by the Fleet Air Arm as a naval aircraft storage unit. After this it was used solely for the Shorts Brothers Company. In 1983, following interest from airlines and customers, the airfield was open for commercial flights as Belfast Harbour Airport subsequently Belfast City Airport, and then with its current name. Its IATA airport code, BHD or Bravo Hotel Delta, refers to the Belfast Harbour and its location in County Down. Jersey European Airways began operations at the airport in 1988. At the time of its demise in 2020, the airline, by then called Flybe, operated a large base from the airport. Many airlines have operated out of Belfast City Airport over the years, including EasyJet, BMI Baby, KLM, Brussels Airlines, Eastern European Airways and Logan Air, most of them now having ceased operations or gone into receivership. Up until March 2020, Flybe operated over 80% of flights out of the airport, carrying over 1.6 million passengers until the airline's closure in early April 2020. On 16th of March 2022, New Flybe announced that the airport would become their second operating base following their spring relaunch with flights going on sale the following week. As of February 2022, six airlines operate 18 routes across the UK and Europe from Belfast City George Best Airport. In 2021, the airport handled over 800,000 passengers, having peaked at 2.7 million in 2010. The airport serves as a regional base for Aer Lingus, British Airways and the new Flybe airline, who are the largest operators there. Ground handling is provided by Swissport and Menzies Aviation, the latter also offering cargo handle facilities. So there you go, that's some history for you. It's uh, been around for quite a while and changed hands a few times. Let's go down now and have a look at runways. So runways, as you can see I've dropped the lighting down now, it's 5 to 7 in the evening local time and the sun has just disappeared. Belfast City Airport operates a single runway 2204 measuring 6,001 feet or 1,829 meters and it's made from asphalt and we're looking down the throat of runway 22 now. Runway has centerline lighting and is grooved. Both ends of the runway feature high intensity airfield lighting system and precision approach path indicators on the runway left side. So here you can see the center line and the high intensity airfield lighting and here the pappy on the left side. In addition, both ends also feature a standard CAT-1 instrument landing system with distance measuring equipment and an NDB approach option too. There are some 12 stands and a GA apron located to the southwest of the main terminal. So here, as I said, here you can see the runway. It looks rather short, about 6,000 feet. It's 
relatively okay and um, as you can see the lighting is correct as per charts. Let's go and have a quick look at the other end, runway 04. So here we are looking down the slope to runway 04 and as you can see it's got exactly the same lighting system although this is slightly shorter and you can also see the slight displaced threshold there uh, which again is correct as per the charts. Centerline lighting and the pappies on the left hand side. So that all looks good, runways look fine along with the navigation leads. So next let's have a look at this jetway and I'll show you the problem I've encountered and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, from what I can see, Belfast City Airport has only one jetway. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a test and uh, see if it works. Okay, jetway doesn't seem to work very well. So let's go inside the aircraft. I'm in the fly-by wire. Um, let's use the EFB and see whether I can get the jetway to work that way. Okay, so here we are with the fly-by wire EFB open. Let's uh, click the jetway and see if it works. Try again. Mm, okay, so I've tried two methods of using the jetway. Um, the EFB inside the aircraft, which does make the jetway head move. And I've also tried um, pushback helper, which I use quite a lot, which also has a jetway option. And it would appear that the jetway does not you know, link up with the aircraft. So something that will have to be reported. So that about does it for jetways. Um, so let's start the main tour of this airport scenery and have a really good look. Here's my aircraft. We're on stand four, I believe, which is the only one equipped with a jetway. Um, and before we go any further, just want to show you this building anomaly um, that is common with some other sceneries as well, where you attempt to go inside the building, which has been developed, by the way, with the drone camera, and um, you're unable to. You're actually forced up to the roof. So as we approach the building, you can see through the parallax glass that the inside is developed. You there, you've got Cafe Nero and shops. So if I now attempt to enter the building, there, I've been bumped up to the roof. So let's come back out again. Let's go down to ground level. Which is again has some development. Here you can see passengers inside. If I attempt to enter the building through the glass. Now that's interesting. I've managed to get in. Let's see if I can get up to the internal level from within here. Okay, I can get to this roof part. Let's go down again. Now let's try and go through the wall to what would be the part that we couldn't get in. No, there we go. You see we're being bumped up to the roof. Okay, so let's try and get into the building from land side. And here we are at the entrance where you would expect to be able to go in. And let's see if we can get inside. Okay, once again we get through the entrance, but once we get to the building we get bumped up. If I try to drop down using the F key, I can't get down. I can go up, but I can't drop down into the building. That's as far as I can go. So there's the building bug anomaly, which I've notified Gary about, um, and um, we'll see whether perhaps it can be fixed. And what I'll do at some point later on, I'm going to remove the scenery, reinstall it and reload it and see if that affects it because I'm also hearing that the bug is intermittent. But I just wanted to show you that. 
So having looked at the building bug anomaly, let's start with a proper tour of airside, an area that matters to you as a pilot. We're starting at the, uh, the southwest end. What you're looking at in the foreground here is the Victoria GA parking apron. Um, and again, the modelling is fantastic. Everything down to the cars, the uh, properly delineated parking spaces, the fence line, and the way it all fits into the scenery is, is really stunning here. And here, just quickly, you can see the landside road. You've got people, they're not animated, but you've got people there. You've also got the train station and the train beautifully modelled here. It's not animated, which is a pity. Would have been nice to see that animated. But again, these are just, you know, just wish list things, really. The detail is really stunning. You've got people on the platforms. The uh, line itself is modelled as well, to some extent. Um, and they've got this lovely footbridge that goes over the top, complete with signs, a couple of people. Um, it's just really stunning. And again, you'll notice the cars are travelling on the correct side of the road. We drive on the left in the UK, as opposed to the right in America and Canada. So here you can see um, you've also got the cargo part here, and right next door to the uh, GA apron, um, here you can also see the flashing wigwags, some of the best I've seen actually. Wigwags exist at many airports and they're also made up in various sceneries as well. But uh, Gary seems to have found a, a way to make them look really realistic. So we go a little bit closer and the buildings are just wonderful. Look at the weathering and he's even got the correct markings on the vehicles for this airport here. Okay, there's a default one, but these ones here are all beautifully modelled and here you've got this lovely effect on the building where you've got moisture on the windows weathering on the building all looks absolutely wonderful and they're just looking over the cargo bits there it's just um, beautifully done I, can't, I just can't say too much about it it's just fantastic So as we move across the apron, you can see the modelling is just wonderful. Um, for me, the only letdown, I think, and I don't know why or how this is, you've got the kind of low resolution ground poly there, um, and it becomes more noticeable as we get further up the other side of the airport when we come to some of the other buildings. But here you can see the apron and the buildings generally are just, just beautiful. Everything's been done so well. And the airside roads are fantastic. I mean, look at that. And the taxiway, there's the fuel farm part, or just one of the fuel farm parts. Lots of ground clutter. Again, really beautifully detailed and modelled. Here we come to the fire station. Um, you know, the signage is fantastic. And there's the security gate that goes into the airport. fire station beautifully modelled and there's a quick look at the fire st the, uh, fire tender models uh, uh, again absolutely wonderfully modelled right down to the tyres and the vehicle registrations and even the um, um, oil marks on, on the ground here too and here you can see this parallax effect where you get um, an idea of what's actually going on inside the building even though the interior here this part isn't modelled and here you can see the internal part of the control tower, which actually sits right on top of the fire station, which is a new thing for me. But uh, there you go, that's modelled inside, even though there are no people or chairs. Um, they, they, it's, it's, it's lovely, it's really nice. And the view out through the window, slightly misted by the glass, obviously is excellent. And south towards the uh, runway 04 threshold. And just an example of some of the detail here, look, here's um, what looks like a fire point, not entirely sure, but it did, again, the detail is just stunning. And there you've got vehicles going up and down the taxiway, again, they're local painted vehicles as it were, and they look great. So as we move airside across the main apron, as you can see, it's been nicely modelled, the apron itself where, which is where you will park, um, is absolutely nicely done. The detail is good, there's a certain amount of weathering, lots of ground clutter, makes it look really good. 
building detail is nice weathered on the outside there's the sign as you can see lots of clutter lots of detail um, beautifully done very very nicely modeled got a, a pity there you got a vehicle and a tug slammed into it but um, that's probably a default a Sobo issue beautiful um, 3d sign on the airport building and of course here from even from here from the outside you can see internal modeling in the building which I can't get into that's the only other anomaly I've seen there you've got that um, red air stairs that's crashed into the building there but it looks wonderful and we continue north here you can see more cargo bins there's the boundary fence landside car park again the car models are excellent they're, they're really really good as is the um, um, car park marking itself generally I mean 98 percent of these models are just beautiful there's the odd one or two a little bit undefined but it's just really stunning I'll just move a little bit quicker um, you here you can see he's even modeled um, additional buildings here this is the IKEA building the car park beautiful cars but um, the only thing that sort of made me frown a bit all this is done on low resolution photo ground so um, it would appear that he's decided Gary's decided to leave the land side part to add the buildings and make them look really good which indeed they do but uh, to leave the scenery ground scenery they sit on as default so there's the IK, um, IKEA building. Now here you've got Lidl. And then below us you've got these Costa, Subway and Burger King there. And again here you can see this effect where it looks as though things are going on inside. Nicely, really nicely done. And this is the Hollywood Exchange. Not entirely sure what that is. I think that might be something to do with um, um, some sort of. Uh, not entirely sure. I think maybe it's some kind of warehouse. Um, you know, a bit like B and Q, but not as it were. And again, if I look at, you can see he's done this effect where you can see what looks like things going on inside. And, and again, there's this lovely attention to detail on the buildings here. No blurring at all. Now we're coming up to B&Q, uh, Sainsbury's rather. B&Q's next door. This is the Sainsbury's supermarket. As you can see, he's modelled it, including the sign and the car park. And that, I believe, would be possibly be the um, petrol station or the gas station, as the Americans would call it. Again, nicely modelled cars. Here's the B&Q building. And again, if I go up close, you can see that it looks as though it's modelling. It's not actually modelled inside, but you've got this effect looking through the glass where you can see that something's going on in there. While we're out here, let's have a look at the runway and taxiways and signage in general. So here's the threshold of runway 22 and you can see it's modelled really nicely. Again you've got these lovely weathered rainy concrete slabs as well where the turning circle is. Runway itself has a slight slope in it and you can see that just up here which again is as per the real airport. So runway exit entry point here you can see the Lincoln sign there that shows to Alpha 1. Here you've got airfield edge lights, the edge lights, the blue ones which we'll see when the light goes down. And again, this is nicely modelled, set into the grass, looks really good. And here we've got a close-up view of the entry exit point here going into Alpha 1, the runway 2204 entrance and exit, exit point. And um, yeah, wigwags, you've seen them, but here's a close-up look. And as I said, I think these are some of the best I've seen. And there's a close-up look at one of the wigwags. Really, really beautifully done. Okay, that's not good. That's um, a bit of a showstopper for me. Uh, vehicles on the runway. Really should not be any vehicles entering the runway. Let's see where these guys go. 
Um, I know that some things can't be controlled from the scenery, but these can be because I've seen vehicles going up and down taxiways and on the stands, but they've been prevented from going into the runway in other sceneries. So this would be a real problem for me if we were coming into 04 on short final approach and this guy suddenly decided to dart out in the runway. That's um, a real pity, that's a bit of a showstopper. So look, let's look at the uh, northwestern side of the airport. Um, this is where the um, Short Brothers factories are and the other bits and pieces here. Again, this is all nicely modelled. And there we are, as I mentioned in the history, there's the Spirit Aero Systems building, which basically is the Short Brothers factory. Beautifully modelled. And here's the southwestern side. Again, it's really nice. Here you've got the fire training ground. This is where the fire crews come usually once a month to set light to this model and then put the fires out and practice. And again, you've got beautiful bits and pieces done here within the airport boundary to bring this to life a lot more. So from the same spot but higher up, there are the rest of the buildings. Um, here's the main fuel farm here. Um, and also here's the docks. This is the dock side. And you can see exactly how close they are to the docks. Incredible. So let's go down and drop the lighting down now and have a look at what the airport looks like at dusk. So what I've done is I've just changed the view here. We're looking right at the main terminal and the parking area. Let's drop the light down now. So just before 10 to 7 in the evening, and as you can see, the dusk, the lighting's gone right down and the lights have come on. We're looking at the main terminal and you can see the parking area is well lit. You can see the blue airfield edge lights and the left there you can just make out the flashing wigwags and the fire station and the control tower on top of it there. And looking south there you can see the GA and cargo apron area and the threshold of uh, runway 04. Runway lighting look, ec looks excellent. Here you've got the center line lighting all lit in the correct way. Um, blue airfield edge lights, there are green taxiway lights as well uh, and they all look pretty good and they're looking north towards the car park and towards Ikea and the other buildings you can see some lighting on that as well and they're looking north you can see the um, Short Brothers big company building here um, again with some subtle lighting added um, and also various buildings here that have been um, enhanced around here and there. The whole thing looks really, really nice. It's all in a beautiful location. So let's get down onto the ramp where you would park and have a look, see what it looks like. So here we are on the ramp. Here's my aircraft parked on stand number four. And here at night, because of the lighting, you can actually see what's inside the terminal now. That's inside that we actually can't get into. Let's get a little closer for you. So there's a nice shot. I've tried to sort of encapsulate this shot so you see as much detail as possible. Here you've got the 3D airport sign that's really nicely lit. And here you can see through the main glass into what we couldn't get into. Here's the main departures building, um, departure lounge with people there and various shops and bits and pieces. And here you can see more detail on the lower level. And here you can see passengers in the walkway um, that we could get into but we couldn't get through into the building and if I adjust the view a little bit more yet more passengers with a lit stairwell inside there which looks wonderful it looks really really good um, ground signage is excellent um, it's nice and clear 77 marking spot there um, and everything right down to the railing here all beautifully done and the light coming from the correct sources, no Asobo globes sitting all over the place, which I'm really pleased about. And another shot there looking from the other side there, you can see more detail of what's inside the building. See, so you can see Cafe Nero down there. It would be lovely to get in here. Um, I, I don't know whether I can solve this building anomaly or whether Gary can update the scenery. Um, we'll see. Here you can see this uh, default vehicle that's... Um, sort of banged into the building and taking out these people but this whole thing the ambience looks really good so here's a shot from inside the aircraft this is what you'll see when you park up at dusk and looking out the window from the captain's side 
and the first officer side all really really nice so before we tour the land side area here's just a quick shot showing you what it looks like generally got the flyby sign some lovely foliage here um, the walkway it's covered it's all been nicely done and again the roadways really good lamps are in the right place providing the light as indeed they should so let's tour the land side area and have a look at what's going on here so a lovely reflection on the terminals there and again taxiway parking uh, sorry taxi signs there's the entrance passengers outside the building um, and areas for taxis and um, buses to park really beautifully done lovely hedge work here as well and again okay we've got some of Sobo globes here but it's not really a problem really really nicely done right up to the car park so let's just pass the building again perhaps a little bit slower again you can see inside but there isn't much lighting in there to show you sort of too much about what's going on you can see a bit but not an awful lot from what I, I suspect Gary's done the air side bit in detail but not so much the land side bit I'm not sure which may be why it's not lit we'll have a look when we turn the lighting right down to night time but again beautifully detailed here and here we come across to the other side of the uh, sort of um, foliage there you've got um, buses and coach passes drop off areas here you've got people with baggage which I think is a really nice touch to be honest I mean that's beautiful that's great I love that the car models are lovely right down to the, the vehicle registrations and this is a nice touch to have these people here modeled in such a way beautifully done so we go across the car park here that's just sort of land side of the GA apron signage there looks good um, they've got a few Sobo globes around I don't really know why they're not really needed you've got lamps here that provide lighting for the car park but again beautiful modeling beautiful lighting very very nice indeed and the roadways are just lovely very very nice here we are land side of the uh, just coming up towards the GA apron and the modeling is really good now we'll head up towards where the train is okay we've got a flurry of a Sobo globe sitting here which is a pity so here's the train line and there you can see the station's been modelled I love the fence line there, it's exactly the right fence line but it would have been nice to see the train lit um, I don't know, these are all things I'd love to see in a scenery this good you know, you know you've got passengers out here as well it'd be nice to see the train animated and lit up absolutely beautiful and you can see some nice lighting has been done on these landside houses as well and here you've got little boat harbour that's really pretty much close to the airport a couple of boats there some photo scenery so we go across to the north side um, okay lighting is a bit more subtle here not not a load of it but it does look nice I love that kind of skyscraper over there to the left that's got that beautiful lighting on it I 
and here we're coming up to the um, Spirit Arrow building again the lighting's a bit subtle it's not um, totally necessary over here because nothing really parks here but the buildings um, okay you, the lighting's provided mostly here by a Sobo Globes sort of artificial lighting and you've got some down lighting there on the building which is nice but it's nice it's all rather subtle and if I stop there that's a nice touch as well you've got that thing there where it looks as though you've got an interior but it's actually not this is a facade but it's again it's high detail high high resolution and because it's high resolution it looks almost real that's great that's really nice and just moving across here there you go you've got the same situation on this building here it's not modeled inside but you've got the, the window detail such that it gives the impression that there is an interior um, and I really like it when developers do that I don't know how much work it involves it clearly probably involves maybe less work than it does to model the interior of a building but it looks so effective when it's done properly and there you can see the outside of the build this building nicely modeled the pipe work it's it's lovely and looking back the way we've come there you can see the view out towards the docks and you've got this really nice building out here that looks like it's worth exploring at some point now as we travel back south we go across the runway I'm looking at the lighting here runway lighting is great taxiway lighting center line lights um, all of it is as it should be so as a pilot everything you need is here there we go green center line lights even go right up to the terminal I actually really like that terminal lighting very nice indeed and then looking at the fire station again the lighting looks really 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 nice um, and you've got this illusion of what's things going on inside there let's have a look and see if the towers lit and indeed it is very nice would have been nice to see some chairs and a couple of people in here he's got he's got people all over the airport but none inside the tower which is a pity and you get a view outside of the tower there but it's a bit dark but there you go and there's a quick view of the um, control town fire station looking from land side along with some of the signage that's uh, just so sharp it's, it's, it's incredible so there we are looking at the center line center part of the terminal there and the fire station let's drop it down to night time now and see um, if there's much of a change in the lighting okay 10 p.m. local time and as you can see the lighting's come up a little bit um, but you get the same beautiful view stunning night lighting that um, Gary really knows how to do and um, really really quite impressive there's a view from the cockpit where you're parked at night time looking outside and the captain's side and looking through the first officer's window and you get this lovely view of the lighting and um, the airport looks <laughs> it just kind of looks real it's wonderfully done so a very quick tour across the airside ramp which is the part that matters to you as a pilot I'm not going to spend a long time on this because we've already spent quite a bit of time on this here but again there you go you can see the interior of the building that we can't get into a lot better and this whole thing just looks wonderful it's a beautiful airport it's typical Gary um, typical of his work and there's the IKEA building beautifully lit and various other lighting effects further down and just traveling very quickly across the landside car park towards the landside part of the terminal so it's, it's a beautiful view it's, a, it's really stunning the way it's all been done barriers there look bushes the foliage is lovely very nice attention to detail here it's 
really nice. If I have one criticism, I think it's just the sheer number of Asobo globes, which in many cases aren't necessary because the lighting is perfectly adequate. Gary's done a great job with the lighting. It's beautifully subtle. Plenty of proper light poles providing the light that indeed it should do. So we really don't need all these Asobo globes all over the place. Simply stunning. And we've got some lighting here by the train station. Again, it's all provided by the globes, which is a pity. And there's a lovely shot of the main parking area with the moon in the background. Just beautiful. Lovely location, beautiful airport. Um, you're going to have fun with this. Okay, half past eight in the morning and we brought the lighting up and it's time to wrap up with review and give you my thoughts. Um, this is another stunning airport. It's another a beautiful creation from the, um, the UK 2000 scenery um, developer, Gary Summons, who's well known and has been around a long time in scenery development right through FS9, FSX, P3D and now in Flight Sim 2020. His abilities are really showing um, and model making is top notch. The only sort of the the only the only bugs I can talk about really is the building bug, and I want to try and see if I can recreate it. If I can't, whether I can get in there, or maybe to find out from the forum, as I posted a message on Gary's forum as to whether this is intentional. So the only little problems I could find, as I say, the jetway on stand four, the only jetway doesn't connect fully to the aircraft. Um, that may be something Gary can solve. Um, down here you've got this red default stairwell vehicle that's bashed into the building. But again, this is minor. Um, and the only other real issue I've, I've discovered really is the fact that... Um, um, I mean, Gary's modelled all of these lovely buildings, the IKEA, B&Q, Lidl, Costa and all of that um, down there on the land side part, but it's all been done on low resolution um, scenery, um, which, okay, may well have been a, just a decision by Gary for that's what he wanted to do, and, and to be honest, it's not going to affect you as a pilot, so I can, I can deal with that. These are really just nitpicks. Um, the real showstopper, unfortunately, here is vehicles entering the runway. This really shouldn't be in any scenery, in my personal opinion. Other people may think that um, it's not a problem. But they shouldn't really be entering the runway, especially if you're on final approach here. But um, it's beautiful. The airport is excellent. It's, you know, even the cars travel on the right side of the road. Car models in the car park are beautifully done. And look at the sheer number of them. Um, it's beautiful. To have the train and the train station modelled with people on the platform, that's really lovely too. Um, I don't know, in the next update, Gary, maybe animate the train and light it. Um, that would be wonderful. But this is just really a wish list thing. Um, as an airport product, it's fantastic. And um, at £14.99, I'm sorry, this is a steal. This is a steal for that price. It's a, a beautiful airport. The amount of work that's gone into this um, just makes it a steal. Um, I think it's wonderful. No hesitation at all in recommending you guys get this and have fun. It's in a lovely location. You're going to have a great view of the docks on a clear day coming into land. But um, yeah, no real issues at all except um, Gary, if you're watching this, it's a beautiful airport. Um, the only things I'd like you to deal with are the vehicles on the runway. Get them off the runway. Have them go all over the taxiways, I don't mind, but really get them off the runway. Um, and if you can fix the jetway, I know a number of pilots who park on this stand might appreciate that. And whether or not you want us to be able to enter the buildings, I don't know whether you want to rechange the, 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 the um, development of the building so that we can go inside or whether that was decided by you. Um, either way, I think it's great. It's, it's a lovely airport and I'm really happy um, to have... Um, had bought it. I, and that's a disclaimer from me. I bought and paid for this airport. I wasn't given it by Gary t for review. I just decided I was going to review it because it's a yet another lovely UK airport. And Gary has such a great reputation for the work he's done. I've always been a big supporter of his work.
So there you go, folks. Belfast, George Best City Airport. Echo Golf out for Charlie. Payware Scenery by Gary Summons at UK 2000 Scenery. It's for the PC version of 2020. No mention as to whether or not it's going to be developed for Xbox. I'm not certain about that. Download is 28 meg and it installs 128 megs into the scenery, into your community folder. Also requires, I should have mentioned this as well, it also requires a UK 2000 scenery common library. as a 330 meg download that goes with this. And when you install this, you will be prompted by the installer to um, download and install that library if you haven't already got it. Um, if you have got the um, sceneries by Gary um, already installed, also make sure you update to the latest um, common library, which um, some other sceneries use as well, I believe. So that's important. So priced at £14.99, which equates to €17.21, or $17.04 US. US and Euro prices are estimates, and they do include VAT and tax which of course will vary depending on where you buy the scenery. Scenery is available from both UK 2000 Scenery's own website and from Sim Market, slightly cheaper at Gary's site than it is at Chim Sim Market. But um, again, we're talking pence. So folks, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up another scenery review. Um, it is wonderful. Um, it's a very nice scenery, I can't recommend it highly enough. Thank you very much for joining me for watching this review. If you've been on the fence about this, I hope this helps you make a decision. And um, Gary, if you're watching this, um, I think it's a great scenery. It'd be lovely for you to solve or um, work on some of the issues I've discussed. But really nothing to take away from such a nice product at a real steal of price. So thanks everybody. Um, look out for the next review. I'll be looking at um, Pisa, Galileo Galilei Airport, new scenery that's just come out, we'll be reviewing that. And also, I've just been sent, thankfully, by thanks for any builds, just been sent a copy of the new Los Angeles scenery. Um, there is one review out at the moment, at least, that I can see from Philbert Files. He's another really good um, reviewer, so by all means, have a look at that. Um, thoroughly recommend his videos. And I'm going to be reviewing um, Los Angeles, hopefully I can get it in this week. So thanks again folks, have a great week and I will see you soon. Take care, bye bye for now.